Folks, this is a quick demonstration on how to set up a document correctly for printing. Um, one of the problems you have if things aren't technically correct is that you send off your nice, shiny, beautifully designed file to a printing company somewhere who promptly send it back because it fails on its technical specifications. There are lots of holes that you can fall into, but I'm just going to show you a couple for today. Um, in another lesson, I'll show you a few more. So first of all, we need to create a new file. We can do that by either clicking here or by going to File and, um, what's wrong one? Uh, file and New Document. So there's my new document setting. And I need to do this as an A6 postcard in Landscape. So I'm going to make some changes here. I'm going to... Um, Go to A6. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's half of A5, which is half of A4. So if I halve both these sizes, I'll get there. So half of 210 is 805, and half of 297 is 148.5, although the point 5 is probably not particularly pertinent, but I like to do it just for the sake of accuracy. That's currently portrait. If I click on this button, it will now be landscape. Moving down, I need two pages, front and back, but they're not facing pages. A um, bit further down, I have the margins. And the margins are preset at 12.7, which is half an inch. Um, I normally make those a good deal smaller, but don't make them too small because you don't want stuff falling off the edge of the page. A common mistake when I see printed student materials. And then further down the bit that you probably skip over, unless you know about it, the bleed and the slug. What's the bleed and what is the slug? Well, if you want to print a picture, for example, that goes right to the edge of the page and is trimmed off by the printer, so there's no white space, there's no white margin, then it needs to go into the area we call the bleed, and I'll show you that in a minute. The slug is where you leave instructions for the printer if you need to. I'm going to give an example of that. Most times you don't actually need a slug, but I'll do one just so you can see how it's used. So the bleed I'm going to use is three millimeters all the way around. That's a good average. Um, some printers will ask for a bit more. Some will ask for less. Three is about a kind of standard. Um, it works in most places I go to. Big exception would be if you were doing large format stuff, say for example a um, very large poster or one of those banners that you see around outside the college, there you're going to need a bit more because it's less accurate. And then the slug area, um, I'm going to put a slug at the top and I'm going to make that 15. Size is really immaterial but it includes the bleed so if I say 18, that will give me 15 millimeters at the top. And then I'm going to click on Create. And there is my document all ready to go. Now, if you have a look at this, um, you can see there a red line for the bleed. Blood red, get it? Adobe joke. There you can see a gray color. That's the slug. Another Adobe joke, maybe. And then here is the main business area. That's where you're going to put your stuff and artwork it. And there you can see your margin. And at the moment, this is claiming to be slightly bigger on my screen than life size. It's 115%. If I hold down the command key, this is on a Mac, control on a PC, and then type a one, it will make it roughly life size. And my judgment is on the screen I'm looking at at the moment, that is in fact roughly life size. Uh, the other one, incidentally, you use is Command and Zero, and that zooms it out to fill the page. I'm going to leave it there for the moment, but I switch those two very regularly. Um, so I've got this piece, and what I'm going to do first up is I'm going to put in a um, special color. Now, if you go to Window, and you go down to swatches, sorry, which is not down, it's over here with the color. Here's the standard colors. 
but I want to add a new one. Let's say I want to add a gold metallic. So to do that, I click on there and I say new color swatch. And it brings up this menu. At the moment, it's running in regular print colors. But if I click on there, sorry, wrong one. If I click on there and go down to where it says premium metallics, for example, here it's got meta Panto metallic colors. I'll find a kind of goldy color that will do doesn't matter much and I'm going to now add that to my swatches click on done I can add other colors now if you just look glance down here I mean there's so much stuff here um, it'll probably be worth your while looking at it twice but um, so down there I've got regular colors down there I have my new color and you'll notice there's a little tiny spot there and that's because it's what we call a spot color it requires an extra run through printing press and what I'm going to do here is draw a box and now I've oh, it's already come up in it um, that's colored with that swatch and I'm now going to put a bit of type by the side of it I'm going to say spot metallic gold now Depending on how precise I wanted to be, I could put the Pantone spec down there. It is, after all, of course, um, on the. Uh, sorry about that ping. Um, it is, of course, within the uh, swatches specification. So I've got spot metallic gold, and that will come out, and I'll show you how I'm going to use that in a minute. First of all, I'm going to get a picture. So to do that, I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Place. And then if I hunt around a little bit, I should be able to find a picture. There it is. So click on open. And that picture is now disappeared. Okay. There it goes. Sorry, it just took a second. So that picture is now there. And I am going to drag this out from the top of the bleed down to the bleed on this side. Now that will ensure that I have my um, bleed picture going right to the bleed so it will print correctly. So I'm good. At, I'm, good I'm happy with that. Unfortunately, there is, because of the way the picture has gone, there's not very much space up there. So it's going to be quite tight to the top of the page. Um, had I realized that, I might have chosen a different picture. But never mind, this will do. Um, I think this is, yes, it is. This is off of Instagram, this picture. There's probably better ones around. Anyway, it will do for demonstration. So I've now got that. I don't need to worry about this piece down here. I'm now going to add some text. So I've dragged out a text frame. There it goes. And I'm going to write spare. Do made a man made a man oh that would do so I was trying to be thinking of a joke but uh, there it goes so I got that I'm going to select it and I am going to come up to type and I'm going to change the size, let's say 48 point. It's a bit big, but never mind, let's carry on for a bit. So I'm looking for a font now, and um, it will take a few minutes to come up. There it goes. So what I'm looking for here is something like that, which is a condensed font, a condensed display font. Um, and I'm just going to shrink that down a little bit. Now, there are shortcuts you can use for that, but um, I'll just do it this way for the moment. And I'm going to center it, I think. Mm, yeah. So I brought up the paragraph there, and I'm just going to click on that button. That will center it. And now I'm going to use shortcut. The shortcut, you have to hold down the shift and the command key. And then you press the greater than arrow on your keyboard and that will enlarge it to more or less fill the space. I'm happy with that. I'm now going to change it to gold. 
click off that so there it is now you could say to me and with some justification that is not particularly visible and you'd be dead right it isn't um, however um, because it's going to be printed gold, it will show up quite nicely on the finished piece, we hope. So let's assume that's finished. It's not, I'm not happy with it really, but it's finished. So I am now going to create a PDF. So you go to export and you ask for a PDF that's print, give it a name. I'll call it postcard. Oops. I'll call it postcard. Um, and I click on save now it brings up this um, screen now the thing here is this is the default high quality print and you would be absolutely um, correct in some ways to think that will give you a good quality print that's what it's designed for however it is the wrong setting um, the setting you need in my opinion is PDF X3 that is an ISO standard for communicating a printed document to a printer. And the other thing we need to do is click on this button here and we need to add all the printer's mark and the bleed and the slug. And then you can click on export. So when I click on export, it's gonna go off and make that. And then when it's done that, it should launch Acrobat Okay, that doesn't seem to work. Let's just try it again. Maybe it's just taking it. There it goes. Um, maybe it's just taking its time. It should launch Acrobat and then, okay, let me just find it. We should be able to see that. Just give me one second. Ah, okay, it hasn't appeared for some reason. So let's find out what that is. So file export most incidentally the most likely thing here is i placed it in the wrong folder yeah there it is so um, it's in my documents folder i never use my documents folder which is why i missed it i'll save it there you can see it working properly so the thing you've got to do here is view pdf which i didn't have because it's a new installation click on export give it a couple of seconds and there is your finished job so Here's my um, chap on his postcard. Up here I have, okay, um, I warned you it was a new installation, that's why it's doing all sorts of things. Um, so up here I have the trim marks, that's where it's going to get cut. Um, here I've got the bleed marks, there I've got the message to the printer. There obviously is the artwork. Along here, you can see a gray scale. And if you did this in college, um, you'd find that that was very black right up to about there. And that's because the college printers are set up for PCs, not for Macs. If you're using a PC, there won't be a problem. Over here, we have a standard color bar. And this tells you that your colors are printing correctly or not. And what you'll find is if you ever get a dispute about the colors, your printer will not look at the picture because that's what you're complaining about. He will look at these and measure if those are correct. That should be 100% Y, that should be 50% Y and so on. So that looks pretty good. The only other thing I can do here is if I click on here, which is what I shall do with yours when you send me, is to go through there and pre-fright your document. I expect this to fail. Why do I expect it to fail? Because I don't think, I mean, I might be wrong, but I don't think this has got enough resolution for um, printing a, a uh, picture. I think the picture's too low. So I'm going to click on Analyze. So there you go. Oh, it passed. That surprised me. So that's fine. That's ready to go. So that's what I'm going to do when I mark your work. There you go. If you've got any questions, please email me at my Bath College email address. If not, I will see you next week.